The future of AI is custom interfaces, and especially being able to embed AI into the products we use on a day-to-day -day basis natively. This has been shown with companies like OpenAI making their GBT desktop app, and Voiceful makes it easy to connect great AI experiences using APIs into your apps to deeply embed AI. Today, I'll be showing an example of this with an article reader that embeds a chatbot that's able to have information about the article and how the user is using the website to give suggestions, conversation starters, increase engagement. This could be used in education context to teach students in a more interactive manner or in developer documentation, giving people a better idea of how to use the product or answer specific FAQs. Hi, I'm Alex from Voiceflow, and today we'll be covering how I implemented custom conversation starter actions both inside Voiceflow and inside my React chat app, as well as a couple reasons why it's really advantageous to build these kinds of products on Voiceflow, taking a specific look at the knowledge base, but also a flyover of custom business logic you can build actually inside of your Voiceflow project. So let's get into it. So let's get started with a look at how to use this um, embedded AI system I've developed. So first we're on the landing page, you have to choose an article to read. So we can just go up here and we're gonna read an article about giraffes to start off with. So it loads up the article in the top left and we can already see that the AI has generated a bunch of uh, conversation starter suggestions as I read the article. So we see here that it's talking about a couple types of drafts. There's some nice images, text formatting. Um, there's a question about blood pressure here. Let's wonder how do giraffes manage their blood pressure? Giraffes manage their blood pressure. So the user can type in whichever question they have and the AI actually has full context of the actual text that's here, as well as access to a knowledge base in the back end to look up extra information to supplement its answer, even if it's not actually in the article itself. And then it generated new conversation starters based off what the user asked and the article itself to get the user to engage more with the conversation. So we can also click on these and it will answer our suggested question. We can go back and forth like this. And then if we wanted, we can switch articles, even switching to a whole new context. So here, let's look at an example of using it for a documentation enhancement. So imagine a developer is reading some documentation here from the Voiceflow docs about retrieval augmented generation, and they're trying to understand what it's useful for. So they can actually read the article themselves and see what's up. Or if they have specific questions or want to go deeper on something that's there, we can use our knowledge base with imported data from other documentation, as well as the AI's ability to answer contextually based off the information actually in here to give a good answer. So we can give some suggestions on what is RAG and what does it stand for? Imagine you didn't know what the acronym was, as well as we could ask a question on um, what is the structure of the RAG prompt? And we can see that in general, it's pretty fast to answer these questions, always giving follow-up suggestion buttons and really helping the user to engage more with the actual content being read. So here we can see it gave a bunch of useful answers back um, and that's lovely to see. Okay, so now let's explain how Voiceflow fits into this AI agent and how we're serving the AI experience. So first of all, when we start a conversation and open the app for the first time, we're gonna launch the uh, agent inside Voiceflow by sending a new user ID that's just generated randomly when a user opens a website that's unique. Then Voiceflow agent will respond with this initial prompt sort of up here in the app saying, welcome to EduChat. So that's here. And then the, when the user chooses an article, we're gonna send a value to the variable API to update a variable inside our Voiceflow project that represents the body of the current article. So inside here, inside our Voiceflow variables, we just have one that is article body and that once populated gives the large language model context on the body of the conversation being had. So this context is sent along with the same user ID to associate it to the same conversation and the Voiceflow agent stores this information in its persistent state. So we don't need to be sending the same text over every single time it remembers what the article body is. Then Voiceflow will generate some conversation starter button suggestions which help get the user started having a conversation with the AI about the actual article they're reading. Then the app will receive these suggestions which are sent through a custom action and then display the button. And then when it gets user replies, the user reply gets sent over the Dialog Manager API to the Voiceflow agent, it responds and then goes back and forth. So here we really see that the app is acting as a front end. Voiceflow is doing all the back end logic, driving the AI, the conversational logic. And our app is being able to embed whatever Voiceflow returns to us, be that normal text or those button suggestions, or it could even be more powerful. You could tell it, for example, to open a certain article and we could be capturing this custom action and triggering an event inside our agent to switch article based on what voice, voice flow is saying. And this, this goes back and forth as the user has a conversation with the article. 
So now let's focus in on one part of this actual project and it'll be the custom action um, conversation starter suggestion, all the way from how we're doing it in voice flow to how it's being implemented inside the code, which will hopefully give you ideas on how to deeply integrate AI into your product. Okay, so let's dive into how this works from inside voice flow. So obviously we have our agent and then we're gonna look at the suggest buttons workflow, whose whole job is actually suggesting these buttons for conversation. This workflow is triggered by an intent, which is just something our program can use to tell VoiceFlow, hey, I need button suggestions, which is used either when the user switches articles or just gives an answer. So from inside of here, it's going to have an LLM block that actually takes in the article body and then a bunch of instructions. But we wonder ourselves, how do we get this article body? Well, from inside the JavaScript code itself, this app is made in React. Whenever a user updates the article, which is done through here, when they select an article, there's a message that's sent to VoiceFlow to update a variable, which is article body, this variable that we saw from inside VoiceFlow before, this one. It updates the article body with the article text itself, which is a text representation of the text body and the images, which is really useful to give VoiceFlow context on what it's talking about. And then it will then send an action to VoiceFlow telling it, hey, suggest the buttons. So it's sending an intent with the same suggest buttons intent that we saw here, which exactly triggers the conversation button suggestion that we want. Then from inside of this, we give it a strict prompt on giving exactly four questions. We give the format with commas and an example. Giving examples is really good when you're formatting specific. Then from inside VoiceFlow, I'm using some JavaScript to process the answer. So I have some retry logic in case it fails, I can try again. But then it's gonna split the answer based off the comma. It's gonna check that it's the right length. So in, ca in case the LLM accidentally gave us maybe only three or five, which would be poorly formatted, and then it can try again as well. And then if all that worked, it'll split all the questions into their own string variable inside VoiceFlow, and it'll do a little bit of JSTOR stringification to make sure to parse out and escape any text that'll be useful later when we're passing it out. Then, assuming everything went well, we'll go to this custom action step. A custom action is a block inside VoiceFlow you can use to send information to your app with a custom trace type, instead of just being text or a button or something like that, you can just have a custom action called suggest question buttons, which is super useful, as well as being able to pass a custom payload. So here I'm getting the JavaScript to create these suggested questions and I'm just inserting them into the action body response. And then it will send the action and then go back to the path where you're reading the article. If it fails, we have some retry logic where it goes here, tries again with a different model, and then increases the counter but then if it's been too many tries, it'll just give up on trying to make buttons and it'll say something went wrong. Regardless, it'll go back to the user reading a question where then it'll just be waiting for the user to ask a question about the article. Once the custom action is sent, how does our app actually capture this to display the buttons on screen? So from the app, whenever the user does an action, it's updating the conversation state. So we will do a send user action function, which sends an action to VoiceFlow um, by making a payload, and then either displaying some text on the screen in the chat box. So when I type something here, it's actually, this is an action that I did. Um, and then it will send a request to VoiceFlow. It will then parse through every single one of the traces, which is sort of the chunks of VoiceFlow's response, and then add them as a response. So it'll be a response from the agent, which is displayed in gray here and can either be buttons or other things. And it's inside this add message function that all the magic is actually happening. If we jump to it, add message is taking in the message and then checking that it is a response from VoiceFlow. And if it is a response from VoiceFlow, it's looking for if we have this custom uh, action, which is suggest question buttons, which is the same one we saw inside our VoiceFlow project here, where we're suggesting buttons. And then it goes through each of the four values inside the payload, so all the suggested conversation starters, and adds a choice for them. And the choices are really just these buttons that are right here um, on our screen. And then from just displaying it in the end, we have a buttons element that goes through all the choices that are given and just creates a choice button for them that you can click. And then the chat box element actually just contains this button box, which lets the user um, press buttons and respond to their action. Once the conversation starter is pressed, all my app is actually doing is sending a user action as if the user sent a text message with the value on the button. So it's not like choosing a normal button where you go down a certain path. These conversation starter buttons, because they have a different handler, are dealt with differently and are just as if the user typed the exact same thing. So here we're seeing a little bit of the power of custom actions. I'm able to handle normal buttons 
and these custom buttons differently. But I could also make custom actions that, for example, inside my app, if I tell VoiceFlow, hey, I want to learn about um, intent classification, it could know what article that is and trigger an article switch automatically, which would not be too hard to make based off the current system. So now, given this explanation of how the EduChat agent actually works, you may be wondering what's the advantage of building it on VoiceFlow? Well, the advantage is that VoiceFlow is made for these kinds of advanced AI agent use cases where you want to be able to add a lot of business logic on the back end. So what's going on when our bot is answering is not just a single ChatGPT prompt and we're feeding it back in. There's actually a lot of complex logic going on, both as you saw in the button suggestion generation, but also here when we're actually answering a question. So I want to dive into one other element, which is the knowledge-based system inside VoiceFlow, which really lets us get the most out of our agent. So when we're making an answer, we're not actually just randomly generating an answer using ChatGPT's hallucinations. We want it to be based off the actual real business knowledge we have. And for that, we're using a knowledge base. So we have already a complicated prompt that's feeding in the full article body, but it's also feeding in a knowledge base question and answer. So what's going on here is imagine you had a librarian where as you're writing a report, you can use the information you know, but you can also go ask the librarian a question to get deeper information. So here our knowledge base is acting sort of like this big library where the AI will generate based off the question it's given, a question that it wants to have answered that gives it clarifying information. So imagine it was being asked a question about how knowledge bases works. And as part of its answer, it has one specific element it would like to know more information about to really help answer the user's questions better based off what it already has in the article body and what it's missing. Here we have an AI step that using GPT-3 Turbo, it's generating a question to ask the knowledge base. Then we have another step where based off the question, it does a vector database lookup in our knowledge base and all its documents to then generate an answer to the question that adds as much extra information as could be relevant to answering the user's question as possible. So to do this, from inside our knowledge base, we added a bunch of links from our developer documentation on VoiceLow about retrieval augmented generation, the knowledge base, and intent classification. And then from inside the reading article step, when we're actually answering article questions, we are generating this question, answering this question, and then feeding back in the question and its answer to the final response step that actually makes the answer that gets to the user. So all this logic is happening internally on VoiceFlow, and that's really the advantage of VoiceFlow. We can actually see by connecting these debugging block right here, what is being asked and the extra information that the knowledge base is able to provide to supplement the question's response. So from inside EduChat itself, here we have an example where I'm asking what is the knowledge base? And then the AI decided that it, to have extra information, it wanted to know a little bit more about what are the key benefits of using the knowledge base. The knowledge base, ironically enough, is a bit meta. It's the knowledge base is answering about knowledge base, but it found information, a list of information about the knowledge base on being able to add URLs and stuff. And this information was incorporated into the final answer that the bot gave. So this is just a simple example of using business logic to build our custom agents that are embedded into apps. But this could be built on a lot more with much more complex agents that can do API calls, look up external information to really make the best AI answer. And instead of building that all as a big sequential program or even a more complicated state machine program using a program like Langchain, instead you can use VoiceLow to build this project more easily, make changes quicker, while still having all the flexibility you need to embed it into your app. Like we saw here with this custom interface, but could be in the future with NPCs and video games, or any other business type logic and custom interfaces you want. Because indeed, embedding AI into custom interfaces is really the future of how it'll be useful to us on a day-to-day -day basis and create innovative user experiences, really leveraging the full potential of AI, large language models, retrieval augmented generation, and all these other new technologies that are coming to redefine our lives. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that demo and have some creative ideas on how to use custom interfaces. As I mentioned before, all the code and the VoiceLow project itself are in a GitHub linked in the description below. And I would love to see what you guys are able to make with VoiceLow and these custom actions and custom interfaces. You should definitely share the ideas of things you want to see in the description below. And if you make any projects, definitely join our Discord and share them in the developer channel. I would love to see what you're all up to. Get started building your own custom interfaces with VoiceLow for free. And some of the resources are linked in the description below. See you around.